All right, thank you and good evening everyone. Welcome to our December 9th, 2021 Airport Advisory Board board meeting, last meeting for the year. Um, Michelle, would you mind please calling the roll? Sure. Uh, Steve Bliss. Malcolm Dean. Here. Harrison Earl. Present. Kent Jacobson. Here. Melinda Jordan. Here. Russell Robeson. Here. Orion Wiseman. Here. And Council Member Peck. You have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, first item on our agenda is public invited to be heard. But I don't believe we have anybody in the meeting, nor who asked to speak. I'll just stop for a second in case I missed something. Hearing none, then let's move on to approval of the minutes from our October 14th, 2021 regular meeting. Does anyone have any comments, changes on the minutes? Ms. Rosen. Uh, page two, line 10. I think it's just a uh, homophone error on site should be O-N hyphen S-I-T-E. Noted. Okay. Anybody else, Mr. Jacobson? Uh, I hate to be the proverbial nitpicker, but a uh, couple of comments. I don't have a line number because I'm printed out, but under public invited, the last line in that section, the word repaired should be repairs. So that's page one, line 29. Okay. And um, on page two, under final call, the paragraph starting with Dave Kopp. Yep. Third line, the word needed should be stricken and it should read that needs repair or that needs that needs repairs. The way it reads, it's it looks like it's asking for more broken fuel pumps. And I don't, <laughs> I don't think you want that. That's what we've been doing wrong all this time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Kent, that's lines 34 and 35 of my, I'm sorry, I'm going to start over. Lines 34 and 35 of page two. And basically well, the way, what you're suggesting is striking the word needed and yes. replacing it with that need repairs. That need repairs. So we would say, and agreed with the previous caller that there is more than the broken fuel pumps that needs repairs at the airport. Yeah. Perfect. Did you have another one? And I appreciate your nitpicking because I yeah. read through and did not catch any of it. I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes with those three amendments then. I'll think I'll start with that. Um, Malcolm, you want to make the motion to? Uh... Yeah, I'll make the motion for that. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second the motion to accept the minutes with the um, amendments. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand, please, because we're all okay. remote again. All right. No one imposed, so carries by all of us who are present unanimously. We'll move on to old business and our financial update. Um, Ms. Marsh or Mr. Coleman, I don't know which of you will, will at least start us off here. Thank you, uh, Chairman Earl. So Joni Marsh, Assistant City Manager, nice to see you all again. Um, so I am not sure what format David provided, but I did get a budget report run yesterday. So Jeff and I could take a look at where things are at. Obviously, Michelle and I have been keeping up on that the whole time so that we are not, you know, wildly overspending the budget, obviously. Um, as it stands right now, we have about $76,000 left in this year's budget. Um, about 15 of that is our admin transfer fee that will automatically be taken out at the end of December. And we have the rest of the $61,000 are in encumbrances. Um, one of those encumbrances is for uh, the fees for um, Jeff's firm as they manage the airport. Um, those, those are encumbered in a PO that will carry over to next year as well. So those funds won't be fully expended in 2021. And then we have funds encumbered in two other POs, one for snow plowing uh, in the amount of about $10,000, which um, while we wish it would snow, 
it doesn't seem like we'll expend those funds in 2021 either. Um, so we just put a, a, a bigger amount in there just to hold it and make sure we had adequate amounts. And then we have the other 26,000 is the, will be the uh, payment for the detention pond that was built with uh, the Karpowski hangars. So I have checked into um, the status of that project. It is not finaled out with our engineering inspection staff. Um, so I can't pay that until that happens. Um, and it sounds to me like that probably is going to carry into January. So those are some of the uh, things that are hanging out there. Um, I would also note that, you know, typically when an employee leaves the city or in our case where David passed away, we do have some additional expenses in the personnel line items where sick leave is paid out and some other insurances come out of this, uh, the airport budget. Um, so while it looks like there are some, like we've gone over budget, those are pretty standard where we, we pay out someone's sick leave um, according to our regulations. So um, that's just a note of something else I saw. And if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer what I can, um, and we'll figure out a better format to bring this to you um, going forward. Yeah, and, and Johnny, I can share what David had previously given to us, the format. I mean, I don't know if it needs to necessarily be in that format, but at least as a okay. guide for how we're, how we're used to seeing it. Yeah, I thought I saw a form, and it, so I, I'll need to spend some time around someone in finance to spend some time to pull that together for Jeff and I. Okay. Um, comments, questions from board members? I guess, yeah, we'll go ahead, Russ. Russell. You're on mute, Russell. Yeah. There we go. Um, I'm mostly interested in the CIP, I think. Um, usually at the beginning of the year, David would uh, give us an update on that, maybe update the plans for the next few years. So uh, I guess my request would be at our next meeting for either Joni or Jeff to have an update ready to go for the uh, CIP balance and any plans uh, for the next 10 years or so. And I'll be given a sort of a partial update on that and some of the new business items that are sort of CIP related. And then we'll make sure on the January meeting that we have a complete CIP uh, review for you. Great. Linda. Yeah, just um, looking to next year, was that budget, had David, I think he'd done the budget that was done earlier in the year. So we have a budget in place, don't we? Going into 2022? Um, Commissioner Jordan, we do. So okay. yeah, David did the budget. I approved it. It went through council um, and along with any CIP items. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, any CIP like the Southside Utility Project, that's all still sitting in CIP encumbered and that will roll over so that we can get that project started hopefully um, and out to bid in January. But, but yes, we will make sure we, yes, everything's in place for 2022. So how is the, um, the billing uh, leases, uh, you know, the day-to-day the -day business to collect uh, income for the airport? Who's handling that? Are you guys, is that still you and Marika doing everything or is that, is Jeff's, are you I'm, doing that, Jeff? I'm okay. picking that up. And okay. so what I, uh, Joni had one of her analysts uh, start reviewing a lot of the leases to sort of figure out where we're at. And I've picked up that ball uh, and spent a tremendous amount of time really making sure that our invoicing process is matching the terms and conditions of the agreements themselves. There are some inconsistency because some leases are paid monthly, some are quarterly, some are annually, mm. some are not being billed consistent with the lease. There are some time periods that are not matching as far as annual renewals. So I'm pretty close to, I think by the end of next week, I'll have that all figured out. Uh, we are behind by quite a few months um, uh, on invoicing pretty much since about July. Mm -hmm. So okay. those invoices uh, will, some people have been great in sending their check in without an invoice, um, but we will be getting um, all the invoices sent out over the next two weeks before the end of the year okay. for any of the back invoices uh, so that we can get those up to date. I will tell you that probably because of my review and some changes, it's going to raise some questions. Um, and uh, so we'll deal with those as they come. Yeah, no, that's good, though, because um, fuel flowage and leases and our, our income sources are finite and then the the tower leases those are must be on an auto pay i'm sure by the uh 
telecom yeah. companies just those, sending those, those in. Two, so which you're right, those are the two biggest ones. Yeah. And those are actually up to date. Good. Yeah. Uh, those, we've been sending out. Uh, we got caught up on the elite aviation invoices, uh, both on land leases, fuel flowage fees, and ramp fees. Uh, awesome. So those are up to date. And I believe the tower one has been paid on a regular basis. Nice, nice. That's a good cash cow we got there. So that's good. Well, I appreciate that because that's, um, you know, that we need the funds and uh, everybody's got to pay the rent. So I'm glad that that's getting a look. So we'll get some cleanup done on that and have a, um, will we, I guess if you see any major changes to the budget uh, income wise after the audit, um, can do you make that kind of change, Joni, and and reflect uh, anticipated income higher than what was budgeted, or do we just roll with it and see how the year goes? Probably gets uh, picked up between fuel flow and some of those ramp fees and some of those other variables, I would imagine. Yeah. So typically, we provide revenue projections during the budget cycle. Um, so like July, and I believe that's what David provided. I did see those. We typically don't get asked for updates um, from our budget office prior to that. Um, but certainly, we can take a look at that and see if there are any um, changes um, that we can bring to the board. Um, it won't change the actual budget, however, for 2022. Right, so, right. Um, but yeah, we can take a look. Good, good. And, Thank and you. I don't, and I don't think what I my review is really identifying any significant revenue changes. Um, it's more of, you know, someone's paying for a year's worth of rent in August when it really should be April one. And so mm -hmm. there's this overlap of a period of time which we had to, we'll have to slide the invoicing to get it on the same time period that the lease agreement is. Uh, I don't okay, think gotcha. there's gonna be a significant change other okay. than, as we all know, um, uh, inflation is up. Mm -hmm. And all of these agreements uh, are adjusted on an annual basis based upon the Denver Aurora Lakewood CPI. Mm -hmm. uh, the last 12 months ending September of uh, 2021, uh, CPI had a 4.5% change. Mm -hmm. uh, two months prior to that, it was uh, 3.7. Uh, so some of these invoices that we will be sending out during this time period will reflect that change. Okay. Um, and so you'll see an increase in revenue because of that, because it wasn't anticipated being that high of an increase. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And can I just follow up on this, maybe just an admin question more, but as you guys do this billing, as we know there's a lag because we're we're behind, all that revenue still gets booked to 2021. So we don't have kind of these weird swings when we look at prior years. Is that is that fair even if you collect it in January? Or how does that work, Joni? Just, just so we know we're not, I, I don't want to see like a wild swing in 2022 revenue from four months of 2021, basically. Just as yeah. Working. So anything we bill, that's why Jeff is saying we're trying to get it all billed in 2021 so it can be recognized as 2021 revenue. Right. And um, I'll double check with Deanne and make sure that that's how they're booking it. Um, it. It shouldn't be a cause for concern. Yeah. I guess that's a that's a good question. Are we cash or are we accrual? Is cool. the city accrual? accrual? Okay. Well, all, all, municip all the municipalities I've worked with are always on an accrual, accrual. basis. Okay. So as long as we get the invoices out, um, it will be recognized in 2021. Okay. Any other uh, questions from any other board members? Well, then, Joni, you alluded to this outside utility project. So can we uh, just move straight into that under our new business section? So update is short and sweet, but it looks like we'll get that project um, out to bid in January. The um, I met with the engineering director and his team, um, and Jeff and I have met with them. We've had the Dibble folks take a look. There were some changes because um, we think some of the initial design was going to um, lead to some pretty significant change orders potentially. So we wanted to make sure we didn't run into a project we couldn't afford. Um, at some point because we do have some limited funds. So we've changed some of the design and the layout. Um, and Alexander Daska is the um, city utility engineer who is getting that project completed um, and, and purchasing. And Alexander let me know that they believe they will have that ready to put back out through purchasing. 
sometime in mid-January. Okay. Questions from anyone? I know this, we've gone through a few iterations of design and uh, on this project already. Anyone have any thoughts on that? Mr. Robeson. Yeah, I just wanna make sure I understand uh, or remember correctly at this point. Um, it's been planned and engineered, but no actual digging has been done to this point. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So we, we have to follow the city's procurement processes and go out to bid and do the whole formal um, city procurement process that's found in the municipal code. So that is um, uh, does take some time. And uh, hopefully, so I would garner, but if we put it out for a few weeks, um, and do all of the requisite meetings and on sites with any interested in prospective um, contractors. Um, we might be under contract in early March. Based on the design, uh, you know, as it's revised and knowing what construction costs have been doing, do we still think this is within a budget that was originally presented as part of the CIP, or is, are we kind of where, where are we at this point with with budget on this? So the budget for that particular project was a little over $740,000, and we do feel fairly confident that we can um, get that project done, at least engineering folks, based on the bids they've been seeing, especially for other city water and sewer projects, they feel that that is still an adequate amount of funds, um, and that's something we'll certainly keep our eye on um, because there's not a lot of other um, options in terms of pots of money for that project. So our goal, if we need to make changes to meet that cost, we can certainly do some, some of that uh, once we see the bids. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that from the meetings that Joni and I have I had, you know, the, the primary change that concerned on the uh, change orders was the original design was basically running along the roadway uh, where South Airport uh, side goes. And, Anytime you're dealing with roadways and, and fencing and things like that, you have a lot more impact. Uh, the redesign is basically bringing it infield and uh, running along the south edge of Taxiway Bravo. So you basically are just dealing with raw dirt and so a lot less physical impact uh, of uh, existing infrastructure. So uh, that is one gonna save time and money. Second is that because we're staying on the inside, the flexibility that we have because the South Side development past what is already developed is not gonna be done all at once. And so we can not take those sewer lines all the way down the South end of the property if we don't need to, to save on some money and have it be designed more in a phased process. Jeff, is the is the line that's going in then sized to be able to support that future development so we don't have to kind of go back in and fix this? Yes. Okay. Uh, Russell, I saw you had something. Thank you. I was just looking back at the original uh, CIP that David gave us two years ago, and it shows that 400000 out of that 740 was supposed to come from Colorado State. Uh, are those funds secured? I mean, what yeah. is the... Yeah, so they have basically promised that they'll give it to us when we need it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's been approved and they've been communicated with and they are standing by for our, our time and need. So that money is there for us. Great. Any other questions? Well, then, Jeff, you, you're up on uh, prairie dog mitigation. <laughs> so, um, Prairie dogs are abundant out at the airport. Uh, when I do my inspections, I see them regularly. Uh, we've had several meetings uh, with the uh, city department that oversees citywide uh, prairie dog mitigation. Um, we have a plan. There's been a plan that's been in, in use. Uh, there may have been a little bit of a slowdown uh, when there wasn't uh, people um, pushing the issue, but it's back on the radar. Uh, we've had now two months in a row, uh, end of October, end of November efforts uh, to uh, deal with prairie dog mitigation. Um, just really briefly, the process is, is that a, a landscape company comes out in a designated area, fills up all of the prairie dog holes, um, puts, the, puts the dirt back in and covers them up. 
two days later, the city staff will come out and see which ones have been dug out because lots of prairie dog holes become inactive. So you obviously don't want to target the inactive ones. You want to target the active ones. So once they have been dug out, then they work on uh, dealing with the prairie dogs in those active holes. Um, I've also been during one of the meetings because there are times where we need, they only do that on a monthly basis, March through November. Prairie dogs are fairly, fairly stagnant and, and they don't hibernate per se, but they don't come out as much. So it's hard to identify the active holes during the winter time. Of course, has, we haven't gotten to winter yet, um, but uh, I have been provided some canisters to address individual holes that may be problem childs out there. And yes, if you have a vision of Bill Murray and Caddyshack, I do too, um, with the uh, canisters and stuff. But uh, we will we will be actively have been and actively addressing prairie dogs at the airport. Jeff, is this something that's been going on for for a while? I, this hasn't been a topic that's been talked about in the last you know, mm. all at least eighteen months or so. Well, I certainly have gotten my ear full from uh, airport tenants about prairie dog issues. Uh, there is opinion out there that there was an aircraft accident caused by a prairie dog uh, that were that got on the runway. Um, they they can be a safety hazard. And uh, so we have budgeted $15,000 uh, a year uh, right now to address uh, prairie dog mitigation. Anyone else questions? All right. You want to keep on rolling into snow if it ever arrives? Snow removal. I thought coming in at the end of October that my first challenge was going to be snow removal. I did too. <laughs> Here we are almost mid-December. Uh, we've beat an 1889 record. Uh, in two, uh, tomorrow will be an 1887 record and be the longest stretch uh, this area has ever had without uh, snow. Made my job a lot easier. Uh, but I will tell you there is a plan in place. I've met with uh, City Public Works staff. Uh, we've gone all over the procedures and safety um, uh, procedures for doing snow plowing, uh, the triggers of how much dry snow, wet snow, slush uh, will trigger snow removal, um, the communication uh, protocols and, and um, all, all the safety protocols necessary. The city public work staff will be working in conjunction with a contractor, uh, Nick Excavating. Uh, they are a citywide contractor that assists uh, with snow removal as well. Uh, so I have sent out to all of the airport tenants um, the snow removal plan, uh, a graphic of the areas uh, th and the priorities of those areas that uh, snow removal will take place. Um, I know we may have some snow tonight, uh, but I don't think it's going to be enough that's going to trigger snow removal. And uh, I'll let you know at the next meeting, uh, hopefully, how our snow removal plan has uh, gone. Okay. Questions, comments from anybody? I'm glad we had the time because that was it would have it would have been difficult had something big happened in the interim. So I'm glad you've had the time to do it. Now it's in place. Now bring on some snow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's test it out. Was Nick Excavating doing the plowing before? Were they on the airport before? They were not. There was another okay. contracting company that was doing it before. Okay. And uh, since uh, a lot of the effort now is being uh, transferred to City Public Works, um, they wanted to feel more comfortable of working with a company that they've been working with okay. uh, on an ongoing basis. And so that's, I think, the primary reason for a change. Plus, I believe there was a bidding process, uh, a city procurement process that Nick Scavating was the, uh, um, the bidder selected. Okay. I will say that, you know, the one thing that I anticipate to be the biggest issue slash challenge is that uh, Mr. Slater uh, used to go over and, and borrow a pickup truck with a snowplow and, and assist in the process, focusing primarily on uh, tenant leaseholds and removing their snow. That is not in the current snow plan. Um, our focus is going to be on the city areas, uh, the, the runways, the taxiways, the apron, uh, public apron areas. Um, so this has been communicated to the tenants. I, I would love to 
find a way going forward to do a more comprehensive plan, but there are liability issues, there's cost issues when you're plowing on uh, exclusive tenant use areas. That's been a discussion for a while, so no surprise there. Yeah. Mr. Weissman. Oh, you know, uh, in the last meeting during public uh, comment, or uh, public to be heard, that there was some questions just uh, about, uh, or some concern um, just uh, about the airport and its priority uh, when it comes to um, plowing. Um, can you speak a little bit to the current plan? And, and um, you said there were triggers by which, you know, plowing will commence, but, but kind of how that will work in concert with the other um, responsibilities that the city has. Yeah, and so uh, working with uh, Matt McKenzie and Ryan Freeman over at Public Works uh, and the fact that we got an excavating as our contractor, uh, I've been given assurances that there will be uh, sufficient equipment and, and personnel to meet the demands when those triggers are, are hit. And, and I don't remember them specifically off the top of my head, but it's, it's three inches of dry snow, one inch of wet snow, and I think one inch of, of slush or something to that effect, which are those triggers of when snow removal needs to take place. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Anyone else? Okay, then Jeff, we still got you in a second at least and the, uh, and the Vassy. I had to shut my office door, sorry. No problem at all. Um, Vassy, quick, you know, the Vassy that was taken out in an accident, which possibly was the one caused by a, a prairie dog, um, is still down. We are, actually I shouldn't say we, the FAA is actively looking at finding a replacement and or repair. When I came on board, there was a lot of, um, no one really knew whether the city owned the Vassy or the FAA owned the Vassy, uh, which obviously would dictate who was responsible for finding a repair. The uh, determination through the FAA was that the FAA owns the Vassy. So that places the responsibility on them, both cost and effort. Uh, they are working at it. Um, the problem is Vassy's are old technology. Uh, they don't have replacement in stock, uh, so that's what's slowing this down. Um, our firm was managing the uh, Boulder Municipal Airport for a period of time. Uh, they since hired my employee away from me, and and, oh. uh, took, and he's now the airport manager. Which it's all it's all fine. It's good. Small small industry, uh, but he believes that they have an old Vassy in storage when they replace their approach system. That has yet been validated. Um, I'm hoping that's true, and then we'll be able to borrow theirs, actually take theirs, They're, they don't need it. Um, so don't have a, an end report, uh, but just in progress right now. And Jeff, sorry, I should have led with this for the non-pilots, can you define VASI in 30 seconds? VASI is a, a visual system that pilots use to determine whether or not their angle of approach uh, to the runway is uh, on course, whether you're too high or too low. Uh, red, red over red, you're dead. Uh, red over white, just right. White over white, too high. So that's, that's basically how it's used. Well, and that one's important because you're coming over those dark fields at night. It's so dark below you. You've got very little reference. And, I will uh, attest to that. I, yeah. I, lay, I brought my plane in. Uh, I flew in from Lincoln, Nebraska last week. Um, landed at about 8 30 at night. And, uh, I saw you. I saw a plane that. coming in because I looked it up coming in from Lincoln. Yep, You've got a me. twin. Yeah. So. I saw you come in. I was coming down airport road. Yep. <laughs> nice landing. I saw that. Um, <laughs> the, um, the other, the thing that comes to my mind is really totally an aside is that we have the technology, the innovation center, which is with the school district and they are working on aircraft and all kinds of things. So if we needed somebody to actually solder and weld and fix what we've got. Um, I don't know if that's an option, but that was the first thing that came to my mind when you were talking about that, that okay. the innovation center, they're building an aircraft, they have a ground school. Um, it has got an aviation focus. Nice. That'd be a, a great exercise. I was thinking scouts at first and then remembered the innovation center, so. Yeah, 
if you if you could send me uh, some information on that, whether Classic. it's whether mm -hmm. the Vassy, I'd love to go over and visit them and certainly give them an opportunity to come out to the airport. Yes, yes, because they're over in their own space. They were just doing drones, but then they've moved into aircraft. And we've got two members of the airport that used to be on the board that are on their advisory um, working with them. Great. So they were building an RV uh, over there and um, they're doing a lot of really cool stuff. So, all right, I will do that. Thank you. Anyone else have questions, comments on Vassy? Yeah, moving quick tonight. Then let's talk state grants and pavement markings. Jeff, I'm hoping you're telling us we're getting a lot of money from the state. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are going to be getting, um, uh, I forget the exact number, 60 some thousand dollars uh, from the state uh, for pavement markings. Um, I worked with Dibble to identify, create a map. I mean, one of the First few things I noticed during my airport inspections that quite a few of the markings uh, on the taxiways, part of the runway uh, are quite faded. Uh, many of the taxi lanes are quite faded. Uh, Dibble came up with a budget of around $89,000 of work that, that could be done. Uh, there are some ways to prioritize that, um, but uh, we are supposed to, I believe, in next week's meeting at the State uh, Division of Aeronautics Board, we'll get that grant approved. Uh, once we get that grant approved, then we'll make sure Dibble uh, will put together a bid package uh, so that we can go out uh, to bid uh, through the city procurement process um, and uh, get, get a, uh, a plan in place so that once winter comes and goes, that uh, we can actually do the uh, painting uh, during the, the right season, uh, which will probably be in April or May. Jeff, can you say the numbers one more time, what Dibble identified and then what the grant was? Dibble's number was around 89,000 for doing all of the necessary areas. And the state grant was in the mid sixties. I don't remember the exact number. That's fine. Do you remember, Joni? Yeah, it was in the mid sixties. I'll, I'll, I'm happy to follow up and send an email around what those exact numbers are. You have a, sorry, Jeff, didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, that's fine. I, I'm happy to answer questions on that, but I did, I did attend a meeting today, um, uh, industry meeting of general aviation airport managers, uh, that facilitated by the American association of airport executives. One of the things they talked about, uh, during this was the infrastructure bill that has been passed by Congress. Um, and they had some detail on, uh, how much are for airports and more importantly, how much are for the different types of airports, uh, you know, general aviation sort of being in its own silo and pool of money uh, that the FAA gives out and that the Congress gives out. Um, just to put some things into perspective during the previous bills related to COVID and, and recovery and things like that, there was three different uh, bills put through by Congress, one's known as CRISA, uh, General Aviation Airports had $45 million in that pool. Uh, the next one uh, had $100 million. The last one, which was CARES, also had $100 million, uh, of which Longmont got a small portion of, of each of those and the few tens of thousands of dollars, but nothing big. Putting that into perspective with the infrastructure bill, Instead of $100 million, General Aviation Airports gets $2.5 billion over a five-year period. So that's $500 million a year. So in essence, five times that $100 million number, five years in a row. So while we have no specifics on how that will be proportioned out through the General Aviation Airport community, what kind of priorities will be put in place, how those monies can be spent. Um, obviously infrastructure focused, but still the FAA has to put the, the bookends on what defines infrastructure. As you know, there was a lot of debate in Congress of what defined infrastructure. Uh, but I'm confident that uh, we are going to have some monies available uh, to address some future projects uh, at the Melbourne no Airport. So Jeff, on that, um, just I'm, I'm trying to remember off order of magnitude, 
the previous bills I think were somewhere in the range of 30,000 ish to Longmont. So if we're talking five times that over a five year period, so you know, 150,000 a year for five years is at least ballpark ish. That's the same map that I did, Harrison. Yeah. Again, there's been no specifics other than how much Congress has appropriated to general aviation airports. So yeah. how the FAA then takes those appropriations and hands the money out is an unknown. Uh, but yeah. I did the same map that you just did. And just one other clarification, and sorry, I don't mean to go first on this, everyone, but at least cares on some of the prior ones, there was zero match from the airport. My understanding is infrastructure bill does require the, the kind of traditional AIP match, the 10%. That, that is my understanding too, which is basically depending upon the type of project, either 90, 10, 80, 20. Okay. Um, and so th there will be some, some matching responsibilities uh, out there. And, and also, you know, on the CARES money and the other money, there really was no restriction on its use other than anything that an airport normally spent money on, whether capital wise or operational wise, you could do it. That won't be the bookends on this. It will be more infrastructure oriented. But it, what I heard today is that traditional AIP money, airport improvement program money handed out by the FAA is quite restrictive and prioritized based upon certain types of infrastructure and safety. Uh, this one will have a little wider uh, bookends on it, but still around infrastructure. Yeah, at least from the commercial airports that I work with, my, my, my other world, um, we're using passenger facility charges eligibility as the kind of bookends, which includes terminal programs and, and some other things that aren't applicable here, but certainly wider than AIP. Yeah. Um, Mr. Weissman first, I think you guys were tied, Russell and Orion, but I'll just, start, you're on top of my screen, Orion, so go for it. All right, well, I think I was, uh, you know, the, the thing that always jumps to mind whenever we talk about grants or, or possible monies for the airport, it would be a runway extension. I know that's kind of core to a lot of the improvement plans that many people would want to see. Uh, do we think that that's the type of project that could possibly be funded through some of these monies? Do we expect a a grant process, or do we think uh, this is just going to be allocation um, based on some formula for each airport? So I can answer that question partially. Would that type of project be eligible? Yes, uh, because that's a very infrastructure uh, oriented type project. Obviously, doing the math that Harrison, there's not enough uh, because I believe that a new runway extension budgeted many years ago is $14 million. Uh, so obviously there's not enough money just from this infrastructure bill to do just that. Uh, there may be monies to do maybe some land acquisition, things that could lead up, you know, moving that bar forward. Uh, but again, that's not a decision I can make or Joni, it's more of uh, both city council uh, making that uh, final decision as well as obviously having the monies available, whether through state, FAA, Congress, or a combination thereof. Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jeff, we got a presentation from Dan Dunn in August, um, and it mentioned the money from the CARES Act, and his opinion as an airport developer was that we should use it if we got it for uh, a lot of things related to electric aircraft, such as um, charging stations, solar power shades, green airport buildings. Do you think that uh, electric aircraft are near enough to being uh, commercially viable and readily available and that uh, that would be something Longmont should look at seriously? Would that help us get grants if we're um, you know, presenting ourselves as a green and sustainable type airport? Or what's your opinion on that whole idea? Yeah, so I think the first answer to that question is that electrification of aircraft uh, and airports is not an if but a when. Uh, it will happen. Um, there are enough uh, aircraft manufacturers by aerospace here in the state of Colorado that have completed design and, and starting manufacturing. In fact, there's an electric uh, King Air that's in operation up in the state of Washington. Uh, you know, a lot of the um, 
uh, the uh, vertical uh, aircraft that are being designed are electric, the Joby being one of them. So it, it is a win, not an if. Uh, I, I think that to start spending money today is premature because there's a lot of unknowns as far as what kind of plugs, is there gonna be a standard plug for these aircraft? Um, what is the best way to bring electricity because it requires a lot of electricity? You have the AC to DC conversion. Uh, the best way to do it is DC storage and DC charging because it's faster than AC to DC charging. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of unknown questions that still need to be answered to make definitive decisions on where those money should be spent. But to answer your question in a more broadly, I do think that airports need to be starting to think about those uh, efforts. I do think they're going to need to start thinking about those efforts because airports will be having to service uh, aircraft that uh, will be uh, charged through electricity. The challenge that both airports, the state, uh, and working with David Ulane, the uh, executive director of the uh, Colorado DOT, the challenge is, is that our aviation system is funded off gasoline uh, FET and has no methodology to collect monies from electrification. Airports have no money, no set up infrastructure to collect for delivery of electricity. There's currently fuel flowage fees uh, for that. That doesn't mean that those can't happen, but those haven't happened yet. And those kind of decisions and, and uh, need to be put in place both at the federal, state, and local level. How would we position ourselves then to move forward in that direction? Would that be like a subcommittee or a, or will the city, um, kind of take the charge as they work on it. Well, I mean, I, I think of the car program, but ours would be different for sure. How, how do we move forward to be getting ourselves on track to be in line and not way behind uh, when the time comes? I, I think the key is staying abreast of the issue. Um, the state of Colorado Division of Aeronautics is in the process of forming a statewide committee to study this issue so that they can be prepared both on setting up a funding mechanism, but also staying abreast of how they are going to have to provide grants to airports to be able to support uh, the charging stations, you know, the methodologies for bringing electricity to aircraft, whether that is solar or otherwise. Um, so I think that it's premature to set up a committee to make decisions because there's not enough information to make decisions on. All right. So I think it's more of making sure whether it's someone at the city, someone at the airport, likely the new airport manager is charged with staying abreast of this issue, bringing back uh, the information, both from a federal and a state level, because it's a regular topic of discussion. We talked about it during our meeting today and make sure that uh, we bring that information um, uh, back to the, the board and the city. Yeah, that's what I would think it would be the airport manager or um, like we have the Longmont 2.0 uh, group that Russ has gone to all the meetings so far on, I think, or Russ and Harrison. And um, so participating in that as, as part of the community, this would be more in the community. And then I guess the other question I just have out of curiosity is who is working on developing, would that be a uh, Longmont Power and Communication thing that they would work on the delivery and the monitoring and the chart, you know, turning it into pay phones for us um, to generate revenue um, from the charging stations. So LP, is the LPC got a, um, have they got a, um, can't find my words. Have they got something going on that, <laughs> Joni? <laughs> they do, uh, Linda. So right now um, there is an electrical benefit, electric benefit. Oh my gosh, I can't. Talk. Okay, you can't. Either. Beneficial <laughs> electrification committee 
currently okay. charged by council that's working on um, all things, um, be it EV roadmap for um, surface transportation, mm -hmm. uh, my planning manager, my building official also participating from a building electrification standpoint and how we might adapt to those codes. So council is certainly moving down that path. I sit on the steering committee, obviously mm -hmm. for the city of mm -hmm. um, Advanced 2.0, so that topic of conversation um, continues um, to come up regularly. And I think that when your new council liaison joins us, um, there'll be some more advocacy and um, excitement around the airport uh, electrification and what we can look at going forward. Um, I think the, the benefit, right, of owning our own uh, electric power mm -hmm. company um, is helpful. And I think that we're looking also at solar options. Um, nice solar array options. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity um, and the electrical benef the beneficial electrification committee, I think will be completed with their work in June of next year. So then they'll kind of roll out the next set of recommendations. I think that's, that's good news because um, between Dan Dunn's proposals and discussion in the past and the board um, being in agreement with him in general, that Longmont, we keep trying to figure out how to make our airport have an impact and be a destination and be set ourselves apart. And in that, um, our marriage, having LPC in our front pocket um, should help us be able to be pioneers in that area and succeed at it because we've got the resources. So that's interesting. That could be one of the things that sets us apart. We're always trying to figure out how to make the airport more unique and uh, draw visitors to it for unique reasons. So that's encouraging. Hey, Harrison, I have to, sorry, I have to go. I just got an emergency call from work. I just wanted to let you know. All right, Malcolm, well, thank you for participating so far and we'll see you, we'll see you next year. In January, yeah, sounds good, thank you so much. You. See you, Malcolm. I, I did want to tag on yeah. to what Joey was saying and, and Linda, Melinda, in that, Longmont has a huge advantage uh, of having a power company and, and also the city looking at uh, electrification citywide on a lot of different yeah. issues. I, I don't know how well this comes across, but- the, Oh that, yeah, there's- That's my, my light, I think this- Yeah, no, there. I can see it, but you got a charging station. Uh, yeah. So that's a charging station at mm. an airport. Oh. Um, that's at Bentonville, Arkansas. I was there in uh, October flying through and saw that and I was like, wow, what's <laughs> someone has electric charging station uh, mm. it's by a company called Beta. Uh, and literally it's a beta version of an electric charging station. They put several, they put about 10 of them across the country as a beta because they wanted to prove that electrification of aircraft. So they flew an electric aircraft from all of these airports nice. across the country from East Coast to West Coast and Bentonville was one of them. But what's really neat about that charging station is that it has three functions. And this sort of comes back to my comment about uh, electrification, uh, not only on the land side, but the air side, cars, aircraft, is that this charging station can charge an electric vehicle. It can charge an aircraft and it can act as a ground power unit for aircraft. Lots oh, of times, nice. uh, primarily jet aircraft, they don't mm -hmm. want to power up their engines to run their avionics. So they have a ground power unit, sometimes you know, pulled a cable pulled out from a hangar or an actual uh, diesel engine that mm -hmm. runs a generator. But this acts in, in three functions. Um, so I wow. think that concept would really be embraced by the city of Longmont, where you could have a charging station along the fence there, where you have a vehicle parking lot on one side, airplanes on another, and being able to mm -hmm. charge either or both. I love the sound of that, because that sounds like our uh, cell tower revenue just sort of happens, you know, they build it and they will come. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that is exciting. That's very exciting. Yeah, I didn't think, even think about the um, um, portable for the jets. Yeah. And I, I'm just wondering, and this may be a better discussion for January when we have CIP, but I pulled up the CIP plan. So we've got, you know, in 2023, a new taxi lane and 2025, some rehabs and joint seals. Both, all, all three of those projects where we were putting in substantially more than the local match. 
probably because of the grants that were available. And it'd be really nice to use some of the infrastructure money to reduce our local match now so we have it available as that electric in, you know, as we kind of get the standards for electric charging. And so we basically have the cash to be able to do that quickly and be able to be that leader. Um, I think that would be a really interesting discussion to see and how we can use that infrastructure money to do that. Good. Look forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else on, let's just say funding broadly, including the grant for pavement markings, which we moved past. Okay. Um, not on the agenda, but I still want to bring it up under new business. Um, Joni, can you give us a quick hiring update, please? Can. And I'm happy to be able to do that. Um, so um, I did hear from HR yesterday um, after submitting to them some time ago that they did post the position yesterday. Um, and in addition to that, Jeff was kind enough to provide HR and myself with additional posting locations beyond the city's website. So the American Association of Airport Executives, the Northwest chapter of that group, as well as the Colorado Airport Operators Association. So we'll get those three links posted tomorrow, but the job is posted through January, or sorry, not January, December 31st. Um, and then I'll take a look and see what applications um, I'm receiving as we go along. Um, may, may change and leave it open longer to depending on how many applic applicants we get. Um, so I'll probably have an update for you in January. I did see it in my AAAE uh, email today. So I was really pleased to see that it was going out to, uh, to airport folks. Yay. Yay. <laughs> thank, thank you both for uh, coordinating that. Um, Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, are we still doing the full-time employee at the same time? You know, so what we have, what I've decided to do for the time being is that our public work staff um, also has several openings in their operations and maintenance group, and that's Matt and Ryan's group who've been helping us with most of the airport maintenance. Um, so for right now, they they had an op they had several openings, so they were going to open that up and see if they couldn't hire a person that could also work at the airport for the duration of this year, which I don't think has happened because they're having a hard time finding anyone apply for um, any of those um, O and M jobs. Um, and then the funding itself for that position doesn't come into play until January uh, when that's a budgeted item in 2022. So, so Jeff and I probably just need to revisit that with Matt, see how his recruitment has gone. Um, Harold would prefer that we stay with a model where we utilize um, a team approach to making sure we have maintenance as opposed to just assigning one single person to the airport at all times. That way we have coverage um, for whenever we need it. Um, and I personally prefer that approach as well. It gives us a lot more options when we have people cross-trained to do work at the airport um, and fewer single points of failure. Mm -hmm. But to date, we do not have um, a separate job posted nor anyone hired. Anyone else have other questions on hiring? And Joni, my question is with the December 31st you know, initial deadline, at least for applicants. Um, we're pushing up against what I assume is the 90 day contract we originally did with AMCG. I imagine we're not gonna have someone hired even if you have a perfect candidate on December 31st by mid January. Um, so is the plan then to extend that contract out? That is my intention. And I have talked to Jeff about that, knowing that we've had some um, timing issues with getting that posted. So that will be the intent that we will continue to um, keep Jeff's firm um, on site as long as we need to, to make sure we have a smooth transition. And that's still at least partially funded through the city manager's office, partially funded through the airport fund? Um, you know, as we look at the, at the monthly expenses, um, again, we're using the FTE costs that we're not expending. Yeah. Um, and actually, we'll have more FTE costs with the other position. But yes, I will be talking to Harold about additional, um, some additional funds from our contingency fund okay. to make sure we piece that together and aren't um, overstretching the airport budget. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weissman. 
to uh, the chairman. Um, I guess this question is directed towards Jeff, and, and I know it's not apples to apples, but do you know how long it took to fill the um, open position uh, at the city of Boulder for their airport? Uh, about a month and a half, I think. It wasn't that long. I think the advantage was is that uh, they had their candidate right there. Um, and so it went pretty quickly. Um, I, but I think from the time they posted to the, to their decision was about a month and a half. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on hiring? Well, if you guys will indulge me, I have one more because of my failure to make sure we followed up with bylaws and put this on this month's agenda. Um, we have a smaller group, um, but I at least want to bring it up as the topic again, if anyone wants to at least start the conversation tonight. Um, based on the bylaws, we can't actually amend it until we, without giving everyone written notice, but if we want to have that conversation now, or if we want to save it for, for January, it's, it's my failure. We didn't, it's not on there to start with. So um, I'll open it up if anyone wants to, uh, wants to talk through any of it right now. Joni, please. I just need to bump in. I actually have another meeting that starts at seven o'clock tonight. So, um, so I'm going to need to leave, but thank you for your time this evening. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Jeff whenever you need help. Thanks, thank Jeremy. I'll, I'll just ask you then um, under board, city council and staff comments, did you have any other comments that we didn't address? That no, you I, no, I think we got them all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Have Thanks, a good Jenny. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Robeson. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys uh, know my feelings on this, but I'll go ahead and state them anyway, just to uh, make sure. My opinion on the bylaws is um, I'd like to respond to public invited to be heard. Um, even if it's in an informal manner, it, it really uh, doesn't even seem like human behavior when we listen to them for three minutes, then you say next without any kind of response at all. It, that just gets under my skin. Even from before I was on this board, I would go to city council meetings um, in the various places I've lived occasionally, and it was all the same. I mean, they all kind of follow the same format that we do here, where you get to speak and everyone listens politely and then nothing, just silence afterwards. Mm -hmm. So that would be one. Um, so that would be, uh, you know, changing the, I guess, the regular order of business. We would have to uh, have you know, board reply put in there or something like that. And then the other one would be, um, since we have rules of procedure specifically stated as Robert's rules of order, I feel like our group is small enough that maybe we could come up with something less formal in that direction. So those are the two main ones for me. Mr. Weissman. So I, 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 you know, maybe later tonight, I'll, I'll speak a little bit more on this point, but uh, I am coming to the end of my term on this board, but I've on, been on this board. I, I've served on a, a couple HOAs. Um, I, I like the direction that you're going as far as trying to uh, encourage a little bit more dialogue with the public um, when, when, they, when they do wanna you know, come forward and they're bringing an issue forward. I will warn you though, that uh, some of those rules uh, exist um, to keep order uh, when things get a little disordered. Um, and, and also, uh, I don't, I, I think the word's a little strong, but I'll say it anyway to maybe protect the board um, from, you know, uh, from things maybe getting a little too personal. So I would just be careful uh, when you guys go to change those rules. Uh, but I do, I believe that the, the intention is good. Uh, so I'll, I, I just, uh, I guess that'd be my word of caution. Um, just make sure that you know if 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 there is a response, uh, that the, there's probably still just uh, some sort of amount of time, uh, so that it doesn't just become a back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I definitely get that. We need to give Harrison uh, a big gavel for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, in like City Council, I think we've all either watched or been at a meeting where you know ninety people came to speak and and uh, show up, have a show of force, and so then that time. You know, we were doing public comments until 10 at night at a council meeting and business didn't start till nearly midnight a couple of times. Um, and I've been at those meetings. And um, so that's that time frame. And then 
but the response, you're right. And that, I think that would be, um, our response would have to be in the form of questions clarifications because we're not able you know as a board i think it's to protect us from uh, me making a statement saying that's a great idea let's do that or something where you're taking responsibility for the whole board as an individual because we haven't had a chance to talk about it but i do agree and that had always been my point as i took notes when they spoke and then tried to bring it into the conversation later in the meeting so if we aren't able to change it for some reason that's a tactic i've used um, if um, they had complaints or things they wanted to address, then I could bring it up later under new business. And I do, I do agree with you that um, we want to acknowledge what's being brought to us and get that cohesiveness in the airport community, get them to come to our meetings, get them to participate, tell us what's on their mind. And uh, so it's a great way to do it. And it is more rewarding if they feel like there's going to be uh, some kind of acknowledgement of what they've said, because it's very heartfelt when people get up there to speak. So I definitely yeah. agree with that. If there's some um, way we can make that work, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, it um, looks like you have a comment. I'm curious what you've seen at other airports around the country. Yeah, you know, I've, I've seen all, all forms of formal and informal uh, meetings, uh, both in advisory boards as well as policy boards. And, you know, th there's no perfect way to make it work, but some of the things I've seen is that one during public comment, you don't create a process where there's an immediate back and forth. Um, that's where one, you don't have a time to breathe before you respond. It's more of an emotional response. Um, two is that it almost invites that person that's still standing there listening to the response to say something again. Um, and that's where you don't wanna really get into a back and forth. So what I've seen is you, you allow the public comment process to go through. And then at the end of that, if any board, me board members would like to respond to that, then they have an opportunity at that time. It gives them time to breathe, gives them time to respond, uh, but doesn't create a back and forth scenario. Thoughts from anyone on, on that kind of idea? That be an effective uh, something in between where we're yeah. we are acknowledging um, and either saying we'll put it on the agenda or we'll you know we're giving them some kind of feedback. So that's that's a good way to handle it. Yeah, I, I understand that we don't want to get into um, a heated back and forth, but a productive back and forth is exactly what I'm looking for. And I think if the president of the board has the latitude to say you know okay we're done with this if it's getting to be too much then a little bit of back and forth is exactly what I'm looking for. Because the people that come to our meeting, typically there's one to three that really care about the airport mm -hmm. and they're not there to you know, start a fight or anything. They honestly have a productive something to say. And if it just comes back as, you know, thanks Don, uh, we'll go check that out. That might be all that's needed. Or you know, a simple little two sentence back and forth is mostly what I anticipated being. I, I get that the potential is there if it's unlimited for the person to just keep on going, but I think that's up to the, the chairperson, I guess it is, not the president, to rein him in with his big gavel. <laughs> hey, Russell, I, I think back to we had those meetings on the safety risk assessment, you know, yeah. a couple of years back, and you know, we had substantial public interest in that, and we actually we broke from Robert's rules under the previous chair and actually had a back and forth with one of the one of the commenters and it was incredibly valuable because I, I think it informed it certainly informed my opinion it, it got some perspective um from those of us who weren't at the time skydivers or you know I, I thought it was really useful so I I I, I guess I'm just I, I hear Orion's word of warning I'm worried about it too but I, I really I want to figure out a way to do what you're describing well. I just haven't been able to wrap my head around how do we do that with an appropriate limit that's also fair to yeah. every commenter. So we're not we're not picking and choosing who we who we want to prioritize in a discussion. And honestly, I, I don't I, I have not gotten my head there yet, at least. So that's that that's the struggle where I, where I am. You know, we live in the age of email and cell phones. If people are upset that they didn't get their their full allotted time with the chairperson. 
you know, there's ways to get a hold of us, all of us. I think all of our emails or contact info is public info. So I'm not going to buy that as a, as a way it, out of this. That changed though. Uh, do you recall that a year or two ago? We it used to be that people could use the button to contact us. It was um, masked, I think, but then everything had to go through the city. Yeah. Nobody could communicate with us. And I don't think that's changed. I don't know who that person would be that it would go to, but do you re I remember uh, being skill, uh, schooled on that, that people could not talk to us directly and they had to go through the city and it's not really clear. So the board, the board meeting really is their opportunity. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I and, think, you know what I'm going to say to that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Let's change I mean, it back. Uh -huh. I mean, it's mask. Yeah, Give them a mask email uh, to, uh -huh. wait, wait to get a hold of us. Yeah, and it was um, it was a throttling mechanism at the time, and yeah. where we weren't really allowed to speak, and um, you know, the, and it was irritating because the public gets to speak, but then we didn't get to, <laughs> so it kind of got backwards on that. And then I do know I will also acknowledge that I, uh, from the notes that I saw, of meetings that I didn't attend but saw the recordings and all that Jeff has had an earful from uh, the usual suspects at the airport, and he's heard everything that's ever happened there. I was a um, uh, a bit embarrassed and horrified at how much sawdust has been resawed so yeah. many times um so we're all really ready to move into what's new learn from what was not done well but move on because some of those things that are being brought up are now five and ten years old and uh so that also being um our focus to say you know the, the thinking being you don't get to just come up and complain you can complain about something but also provide some type of a solution and uh, an idea something to move it forward and not just come up and i feel like jeff got just the complaining lots and lots of old complaints so we're ready to have dialogue and get that energy that um, people bring to us with their observations and the public forum is really our way to do it and be in the sunshine and be all all good on everything so to be able to um, make good use of our time we give up our night to come you know, either go sit at council chambers or be in these meetings. And I really preserve this time and figure, I mean, we used to go until like 10 o'clock at night with these meetings because there was so much participation and I'm always prepared for that. And I, you know, I have one night that we can have open discussion on things. And so I really try to make the best of that and be sure we get everything out here that we possibly can because most people's schedules don't allow for a lot of side meetings. So anything we can do to make the best use of our time, the public's time and move advance things as opposed to just listening and taking notes. I think we do agree on all that, that uh, and that's the board's intent and we're getting kind of another start um, with the changes. And so it's a good time to have that discussion and, and um, formalize it. And then you give that warning um, Harrison, that about being polite and not naming names and keep everybody in line. And you can also use that to shut stuff down sure. if it's out of line. Yeah. Well, Melinda, I, I like the idea of, you know, moving forward, moving into the new, you know, next year we'll have a new airport manager. Um, we will have at least some changes on the board and we'll be very sad to see Orion and Kent not with us. Um, and, you know, with those changes, with a new manager, it's probably the right time to be setting the new expectation for the meetings and the comments, mm -hmm. and, you know, so that manager has that day one. Yeah. So, so I think my question would be, and if anyone has further discussion, please interrupt me. Do we want to kind of discuss word by word changes in January or do we want to have a smaller group? And maybe that's me and Russell or Melinda and Russell or wh whoever that is kind of draft up what that looks like for us to discuss then specifically in January. And that'd be the most efficient. Yeah, I think that'd be the most efficient to have it ready so we can make progress on it. Because otherwise we end up two meetings down the road for everything. Why, so that would be good. Yeah. Why doesn't everyone here who cares, you know, bring a draft of whatever amendments they want to do and everybody has a draft ready to go and we'll discuss it in January. So if, if that works, we can. We do have to provide each member five days written notice before we can amend it. So if we do that, we can't amend till February. 
Yeah, that's so that would be the only where we're comfortable. Well, I guess, I guess we have a new member at yeah. least. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's no big hurry, but yeah, okay. Yeah, just kind of get things started on the right foot. Yeah. So let's have that conversation in January then. Everyone, everyone come with a red line. Orion Kent, if you'd like to, we would very much welcome you and public invited to be heard in January. <laughs> Please. There you go. And, uh, and bring your teams then. Um, with that then, and seeing nobody from the public still on to do final public invited to be heard, let's move on to uh, board council and staff comments. And I'll just kick us off with a farewell to Kent and Orion. Uh, both of you, we've I've really enjoyed having you with us on this board. I have appreciated your questions, um, particularly um, Ken, some of the questions coming from a not a pilot perspective, because um, they, 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 I think they, they ground us a little bit differently and they approach it from a, a different issue. And they've been enormously helpful to me um, to make sure that I'm at least keeping that perspective in my mind, even if I'm not approaching the question that way. Um, Orion, the words of caution, the uh, the perspective, the the forward looking. I mean, I, I have appreciated having you both on here. So. Very much, yeah. You've brought some um, with your real estate experience, and yeah, you guys just bring. You ask those questions that we don't think to because we're either too close to it or it just doesn't. You know, we're not thinking. I think it's always good to be a third person observer and stuff like this, bring a different perspective. And uh, you guys have been wonderful. And we'll be one short. So that'll be a shame. And uh, I don't know if it's too late for you guys to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no, I, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, Harrison and the rest of the board. Uh, I've, I've learned a lot being a non-pilot um, what I had hoped to bring, and it, it's interesting, I, I spoke up too late, but literally one week, before, roughly, Harrison knows this, but the rest of you I don't think do, one week before uh, David's passing, I had written him a, an email saying, my real estate experience, I had hoped to be involved in improving the lease negotiations and making sure a lot of what Jeff opened his meeting tonight saying about C, uh, CPI increases, are they being uh, administered properly? Are the rents, you know, are, are the, that was, that was where I had hoped to, to bring some uh, expertise to the administrative side of the airport, but I just didn't find with David's personality and lack of openness uh, and, and my not speaking up earlier about my intent, that it, it just never happened. And uh, so from that standpoint, uh, I feel badly, but um, I think I, I really like what, what the board is doing. Uh, they're on the right track. I think Jeff is, sounds like he's doing a great job. Uh, and I just hope that you get a new airport manager that, that you, we can all relate to not that David didn't do a good job, but it, it just wasn't wasn't opportunistic to to um, forge ahead, in my opinion. I'd been offering for I don't know three years while I was contracting to come in and help with anything. I it, when he was overwhelmed, I constantly offered to come in because I managed an airport in my past, and. Um, I offered to go in and help him out and just as a volunteer. Yeah. And I also, there was, uh, I didn't get taken up on that offer. And um, so that's, I, yeah, I respect what you were trying to do. And that's an important piece of what we do out at the airport. And um, I appreciate that you did that, but don't, don't feel bad because I don't think you would have had it. I don't think you would have had him take you up on it anyway, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Thank you, Melinda. Yeah. And I do hope, though, that as you, uh, you know, keep an eye on the agendas, as these topics come up, you know how to reach us all. Um, and we would very much welcome your perspective and input, um, particularly in a public invited to be heard where we can have a back and forth a little bit and, um, and, and really understand the perspective there, because that's a perspective that the rest of us don't have. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you guys out there with uh, Krenzel and Don Dulce in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
definitely Ron Krenzel. You're going to be in charge of telling him to sit yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> or Howard. <laughs> Does anyone, um, Orion, sorry. Yeah, so I just want to take a moment to, to uh, tell you all that I, uh, I've appreciated working with you on this board. Um, been honored to be part of this board. Um, and uh, I think, Melinda, you put it well. Um, there's a lot to look forward to with the airport. Um, I think one thing that, uh, you know, that we've said as a board a few times, and sometimes it feels like it doesn't always resonate, is that the airport is valuable. Um, it's something that really sets Longmont apart from some of the surrounding communities. Um, and just some of the available space to develop the airport um, is something that other, uh, other airports don't have. So um, I'm very confident that you guys are gonna keep moving things forward. Um, I just, uh, I wanted to take a moment to say that how much uh, I've appreciated uh, the opportunity to be part of this. We've enjoyed you. Um, I'll use that segue to ask Jeff on the uh, the hangers. I know you've been working to, um, and that was one thing I'd offered to help David with, assess the hangers, you know, just get an inventory and be sure um, that we are uh, op, uh, maximizing our investments out there. And I know you've been working on inventory. I also um, am one of the admins on the Facebook page for the airport. And we do get at least couple times a month, I get increase uh, people looking for hangers. So just to let you know that that's always happening out there, we would try to refer them to elite. I don't think that got us very far. David kept a list. He kept a, um, a callback list. And of course, by the time, you know, there'd be 12 people on it and the first eight on it had found another place to park their planes. But um, it's just a service, a kind of a value add that, um, is important. And then with that, I'll bring up the unpopular idea. It was unpopular in the past, um, the idea of an audit or some form of verification that the hangers are being used properly. And I say that uh, from a very personal perspective in that I pay for storage units and I pay a lot for them and they don't hold half of what a hanger would hold for more money. And uh, so I'm sensitive to that, that it is uh, tempting to convert a hanger into a storage unit. And then there are, I was at the airport, we were having an air show and a girl was walking past me and opened up her hanger and I, she was getting ready to open it. And I said, what kind of plane do you have? And she's like, oh, well, don't tell anybody, but I'll have a plane. And <laughs> it, she had, I, I mean, my jealousy factor, had she had a plane, maybe she had two of everything, uh, wave runners, a boat, motorcycles, um, stand up paddle boards. I mean, the girl had so much kit in there and I could walk you to where that hangar is. And I don't know if that was a legacy. Maybe her dad had the hangar or her mom or somebody else and she inherited it, but there wasn't an airplane anywhere in there and ladders and all kinds of stuff. And um, it was very, I was in the middle of an air show with hundreds of volunteers that I was managing. So I couldn't do anything. But at the time I just thought, wow, you don't know who you just showed that to. And, but then every time I brought it up, uh, David didn't want to be that guy. He didn't want to be the guy that went around and did inspections. But there are, we know of some that have an airplane packed in the back with stuff all in the front. And even people leasing out, subleasing their airports to um, people that are living there, um, not just having an office. And so there is some nefarious stuff going on that's it's not the end of the world, kind of live and let live stuff maybe, but if, uh, you know, we've got rules and regs for a reason and um, and at night you see things at the airport that you probably shouldn't see and that people are camping out and staying out there. And that's, we, you know, I don't know if in the future we'll have maybe a better camera system or we could hire secure toss or somebody that would just patrol and, and uh, take an inventory or something like that. I've seen you out there working quite a bit and maybe the airport manager, the future uh, would have a night or two in the, um, in their plan where they would do a night audit, that kind of thing. Um, and then the other thing I would just add is that um, 
you know, your friend's just down in Boulder. You should probably keep it in Boulder County. And then you could just come run our airport. <laughs> you know what's going on. <laughs> So, just so a shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, I'll commit to you. I won't be your future airport manager. <laughs> I, my consulting company, I have 12 employees. Yes. I've had my company for 24 years. And uh, I, I love what I do. And I've been enjoying <laughs> thoroughly what I'm doing a long month. But Isn't it time to move on? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't um, it time for something fresh? Will you be uh, the part of the interviewing team? Uh, I don't know specifically. I know that I'll be involved in some way, according to Joni, but I don't know what my specific role will be. Um, I, I certainly want to make sure that the airport gets a person with the right energy, the right focus, and the right experience uh, for the airport, based upon what I've learned during the last uh, seven weeks and probably for the next many weeks. Yeah. Um, but I will respond to some of your comments and questions, Melinda. Uh, my focus has been sort of threefold. One is uh, getting a good communication uh, mass email list. Uh, I hope most, if not all of you, if you're not, uh, make sure I have your email address because I've been sending out about every two weeks an email to everyone. There's 262 people on our mass email list and uh, talking just about things that I've been doing, things that are happening, grants, prairie dog mitigation, snow removal, and things like that, just trying to keep people up to date. Um, so I, my first focus was, okay, who should I be communicating with? Second is a review of all of the leases, making sure I know who has a lease, who are they, their contact information, so that I can start the process. Third has been getting all of the invoicing up to date. Fourth is going to be compliance. Um, and I'm probably a really good person to deal with this because they can get mad at me and then I'll leave and then the new manager can come in and be the hero <laughs> if they need to be. But you know, the, the non-aeronautical use of hangars is not just a rule that your airport has, it's an obligation that the city has as an airport sponsor to continue receiving fund, funding from the FAA. Um, and there's some very specific and recent guidance from the FAA on non-aeronautical use of hangars. So that certainly will be part of um, our compliance review. Um, I, I want to roll that into that my experience at the airport has been nothing but pleasurable. Um, it's, I'm not going to say it's always been easy, but the tenants have been very welcoming. Um, they've been easy to talk to. I would say there's only been one person that was uh, semi-obnoxious, um, but for the most part, everyone has been really welcoming to me, and, uh, and it's been good. On the city side, even better. Um, you know, one of the things I heard during my first uh, board meeting uh, when I was introduced, and then after I came on board, we had a, a, a public meeting where anyone, tenants uh, could come and, and talk. And, and then some of my one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, both with the Longmont Pilots Association and, and other groups, what I heard a lot about historically is that the city didn't care, that the city doesn't support the airport. Um, and I agree, I don't know if it was Harrison or Melinda that said you know, that that's history, let's focus on now and the future. But what I have, what I'll tell you and what I've told everyone is that I've seen nothing but support from the city uh, towards the airport, uh, whether it's public works, whether it's fleet services, whether it's legal, uh, finance, environmental services, parks and rec, anyone I called asked for help, I got the help immediately. I uh, got the information that I requested. Um, so I, I don't know if that is new. It is. Or it may just be something that happens for a reason. And I'll tell you the reason I believe. And, and I heard a comment about Mr. Slater, and, and, and I don't want to comment specifically on how Mr. Slater managed the airport, but relate this more to what I've seen in other airports is that Airport managers that come in uh, in city and county airports feel like you know they're the only one that understands airports and that there's an expectation from the city that they need to manage the airport and do everything there. And that 
creates this environment where they're not as encouraged to reach out because mm -hmm. by reaching out, they feel like they're not doing their job or they're a little bit of a failure. Um, and so I'm quite the opposite, you know, I'm very capable, but I'll take any help that I can get. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I'm going to encourage. And because I know that Joni has talked that there'll be this transition period between me and the new airport manager. And I'm going to give him every single contact that I have uh, gotten over the time, explain to him who's there and ready, willing and able to help. Uh, encourage that person to uh, reach into the city uh, for the help because Again, I and that includes Joni's staff and and Harold and everyone that I've seen nothing but interest and support for the airport. I do. Things have changed in the tone with the city, um, and I think it'll be interesting. I'll just speculate that if Marsha ends up being our liaison again, um, because she's really in that green initiative, it would be interesting to have her be back with us. Um, we had her a few years ago, and. The, we had all the skydiving lawsuits and uh, it just went on for years. And so the city really couldn't embrace the airport because there was so much uh, perceived opposition. The opposition wasn't, it was a big show and uh, they, they put up a lot of dust and stuff in the air. And it seemed as if the whole city hated the airport when it was about, I don't know, nine people. And, um, but the city really couldn't politically embrace the airport. And so we also, lot all of our projects, all these things that are so far behind was also that we had to hang back and couldn't be very aggressive, not knowing, um, not having the support of the city and this, the future being um, clouded, not necessarily uncertain or cloudy, but just clouded. And so those were settled out, you know, ultimately in the Supreme Court. And there's still the part 16 issues that we still have to face, but the, it's in everybody's rearview mirror and the city ha, is able now to embrace it as part of the 2.0 um, advanced Longmont. And then again, if we really um, devote energy and a commitment to the green initiatives, we will always find favoritism and we'll always find a way to move forward. And uh, I just appreciate that you, you took a lot of hits for really old things that haven't even happened in the last five years and then some that have, but um, just again, this a uh, lot of old, old issues. And our prior airport manager was more a handshake and a nod. And then we moved into rules and regs. That's when I joined the board and became very unpopular because I was, I, you have to have rules and regs. And um, I was sometimes the only person voting for them. Um, we didn't want to get that formal. We had to. And so now I really do see us poised for the next step with the things that are happening in city government that the end of the skydiving lawsuits, um, the part 16, hopefully will get settled out soon. I don't have it. I don't know if we've heard anything on that I'll lately. I'll an update on that when you're done. Okay. Okay. And then we're really, yeah, I think we really all are poised to, we're ready to say that was then, now let's move forward and, um, and have some new conversations and be able to have a good idea of where to go and be more organized about it. And uh, that's, that's, I think what we all look forward to and that we have some um, important uh, popular things to get polarized around, which would be um, electric and and all the things that go with that. So that's the that's the exciting part. And we just appreciate that you've come in and picked up a whole lot of garbage and um, and straightened up literally and figuratively and uh, straightened things up for us so that we're, I feel like we're much uh, better positioned to move into next year and start have, making some progress again. And COVID set us back too, of course, as everybody but really get us so that we're ready to be in a position to move forward. So we really appreciate that. And again, you guys um, being on the board, I just wish you could hang in there to see a little bit more get done and um, you know, be participate. You put in a lot and to see that come finally come to fruition, that would be wonderful. So keep looking at the newspaper. Um, um, one thought I'd go ahead. add if I may, thank you Harrison. Uh, and Melinda, you talked about the future. Uh, the airport expo didn't come up tonight, and you I, don't think I, re it's... <laughs> I remember Dale 
I remember Dale telling me the first meeting three years ago, it takes at least a year and a half or two to, does. to, to really, and, and you know, Melinda, more than any of us, how much work is involved and you've already done some, but I, I'm afraid if that gets kicked down the road till January, February, March. Yeah. It, it, well, we did, if you remember, we had, we moved, David recommended that we move to 2023. Right. And so we would need to start working on 2023. And I think we've got so many other things going on, uh, but we do, if we've got the budget for it, we can hire a little bit more of that or build it up another team. So um, that's a huge undertaking. And I was, I've been thinking about it all night because uh, when, you know, down, the board, it's no requirement of the board. It's, it's uh, a, a, an expectation. Yeah, I'll say that, but it's not a requirement. And, um, and it's not a requirement to have the air show, but the public loves it. And by 2023, um, we'll have some exciting things to, to show and we can bring in that electric aviation and we can bring in some things that we wouldn't have had for 2021, which was when I thought we'd be having an air show and uh, not even for 2022. We may need to push it out to 2024 and then we'll really have some cool stuff to show. So um, that is, uh, my term ends this time next year on the board. I will, have, I will have filled all the possible years I can do it, but the air show is a, is a, a different uh, passion project. And then with all my um, large scale event stuff that I've planned in the past. So I will continue to participate. Um, I was a volunteer prior to joining the board and then I'll, I'll return in that capacity, but we'll be trying to figure out who that next group is. Cause that was also some of the uh, senior people at the airport that ran it and are still there and willing to participate, but they're not going to run it. So that'll be a, a pretty big discussion for us to have to figure out, you know, who really wants to, to shoulder the, the top tier responsibility and then filter that down and get all the committees going so we can start having meetings on that. But for those DOD clearances, it was well over a year we needed those done. So I'm in a government, well, I'm in a uh, government contract position now. So I've got, I've been cleared and cleared and cleared. So I think I'll be able to move through all that. And then uh, maybe we can call on some of the uh, kids that I did their capstones with them and get them to come back, get Jack to do us a bunch of clearances because he's in the Navy now. So um, yeah, I do have my eye on it. And I am wondering if we're going to be able to make a 2023 show. And I, I don't know. So if not 2024, it'll be huge. And uh, I'd love to have that little bit of extra time to really get creative with what we're going to present and have it be different than the previous one. Same, you know, all the good stuff, but to bring in some other elements as well and have it again, more of a um, air shows typically are looking backwards at antique aircraft and, and the history of aviation. And we've really been, and then we were in a period of honoring aviation and I'd love for us to now have a forward focus and, um, and get the Innovation Center involved. And we have the opportunity to pull in a lot of other players. So thank you for bringing it up because it's been on my mind all night. <laughs> well, thank you both because it has slipped my mind uh, as the bylaws did of keeping it on the agenda. So yeah. it will be back on, I'll make sure it's on in January. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure we, uh, we, we bring this up and you know, in the spirit of moving forward mm -hmm. um, and look into the future we are you know, we have that as a, as a priority and as a focus. And assessing what we're capable of, because if it's, yes. if 2023 is going to come at us too quickly, um, then we push it out another year. Uh, the, you know, the public loves it and we want to respond to them, but we can only do what we can do. So. Okay. Um, I'll just, it looks like Kent dropped off. Hopefully I'll drop back on. We still have four of us. So we still have a, four, a quorum. Um, does any other, any of our remaining board members have any other comments before Jeff? I know you had one um, on part 16. Anyone else? Jeff? So just an update on the part 16. I assume that everyone was aware a while back that there was an initial determination by the FAA in favor of the city. There was a few things in there that they commented that the city could do differently, but they weren't in violation of their airport sponsor assurances, which is the primary outcome uh, that they're asking for in that determination. 
the appeal process was triggered by, by uh, Mile High uh, for the uh, FAA director, uh, the administrator to uh, review the compliance office's initial determination. Uh, that what's called a final determination came out uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, in favor of the uh, city and supporting the initial determination. Um, that is nearly closing that part 16 process. There is one final appeal process that a um, party can make. Uh, that is to the US appeals court uh, where they can appeal uh, the FAA administrator's final determination. I can tell you from experience that there are very few Part 16 complaints that get appealed to the U.S. Appeals Court. Um, a few do. It's not cheap and it, and it takes a lot of time. Um, so I'm not going to tell you it's not going to happen, but I don't anticipate that happening. Um, and so that uh, is a hopefully a turning point where the city and Mile High can get back onto some normal lessee, uh, lessor relationships and, and uh, uh, find a, a way forward. Have you had any discussion? Do you, um, you want to render an opinion on that? On, um, have you been in contact with Mile High? Have you had conversations or at least developed to kind of set a baseline? I have not. Um, my goal is I have talked to people on a more general basis, uh, but not lessees other than elite aviation on less or lessee relationship issues. Um, I, in talking with Joni, one of the things besides uh, lessee invoicing. There's also a permit invoice that is supposed to be going out on a regular basis that has not been. Uh, yeah. We have been receiving checks uh, from uh, Mile High, even though that invoice has not been going out. But before the end of the year, I do plan on uh, reaching out to Frank um, and extending a, a hand and uh, opening up that dialogue uh, so that uh, uh, we can start those discussions. Good, because I they are a big tenant, and uh, it's been a rough road. The um, and I I would think that the appeals are done. There was I thought there was an amendment or an additional that the Part Sixteen had another uh, a supplement or something that had been filed, you know, a year well, or two ago. Right, Is that, that was resolved. Is that one resolved too? Yeah, that was all. I mean, that was the part 16 complaint. So the initial determination, Mile High appealed that with okay. additional documents that triggered the um, process, which is goes through the administrator for the final determination. So okay. that was the ruling about three weeks ago on that. So. And I don't, I don't speak for anybody else on the board except myself, um, but the fueling operation did provide uh, finance money for us and we don't really talk about it um with david we didn't that uh, when we asked about fuel flowage fees and why they were down we were given a lot of other reasons but uh that big old truck you know all that came to us and it's not at our airport i don't know uh my understanding was that frank wanted to get that back at Longmont, he's uh, made do and got a workaround, but he'd prefer to be on the airport. I know I'd prefer to see the fuel flowage coming to our airport. And so if that's something um, that is, do you think that that's possible? Because I, I know the soil testing and everything he had to do came back uh, negative, that there was not, he wasn't leaking into the uh, ground over there where he was parked it didn't bother me but it might bother other people i just i don't know if that if um i guess i would say i'd hope that that would come back onto the table to have a discussion if it's viable for him to bring fuel to bring his fueling operation back yeah and in in this public forum i don't have enough information to really provide an opinion of, yeah. uh, of what happened historically I agree that any fuel we can bring on to the airport that is financially beneficial to uh, both tenants and the airport sponsor is a good thing, uh, as long as it can be introduced in a safe uh, manner 
and one that is not unjustly discriminatory to other users on the airport. So I imagine that those will be some conversations that will be had with Frank uh, when, when I open that door. Fantastic. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that there is going to be, and then uh, you'll be able to pave the way for the, um, the next manager uh, to get that line of communication back open. So that's good. That's good. It's been an awkward situation for quite a while and it's a huge operation at our airport that draws a lot of positive and it really has been taken out of, um, out of context and, and caused a lot of problems for years for reasons that didn't need to exist. And so our antagonist has moved to Florida and it's gotten very quiet. And a few people that used to come speak on her behalf also have stopped talking. I do see him on next door quite a bit, but um, he talks there, but he isn't even coming to our meetings anymore. So I think we finally, I think people have moved on, thank God. And uh, it's, it'll be good to get that uh, normalized um, for the future. I think we'll all be happy to not talk about it and just have a normal relationship. So I appreciate, again, everything you're doing and that you're willing to walk into the fire on a lot of this stuff. So with that, I'll give one final chance for anyone. Any other comments? Well, then let's uh, let's adjourn our meeting for the evening. Thanks, everyone, for the discussion. I, I'm really pleased with where we're uh, kind of going as a group and the discussion about moving forward. Orion, uh, we'll miss you next year. Kent, we'll miss you next year. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing everyone in January. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good night, you guys. Merry Christmas. Thank you.